Hey, welcome to the Votary Podcast. We're a team of filmmakers based in New England who are passionate about storytelling. We talk about the impact the stories have in every part of our lives, from business to culture and everything in between. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Votary Podcast, episode 10. Today we have Jono, Jamin, Cody, and Mike. Yeah. What's up? Jamin, say hi. Hello. It's me. <laughs> Hello. You're and Michael had a few ideas of what we could talk about and how well, it t- ties into last week. Yeah, last week was we were talking about the anti-hero, if that is just a trend, if it's a uh, if it's here to stay, and I Care A Lot came up, and I kind of, as a joke, Said everyone should watch yeah, that as movie. A joke. As a and joke. then you came Followed back. But then up. after we started, ro- we were Everybody not rolling. Sure. I, yeah, I pulled everyone aside one on one and said, "If you don't watch <laughs> this movie, I'm so angry." Yeah. Well, so we talked about War Dogs, which I think I'm the only one that hasn't seen that. Yeah. Which you? So the story from last week was Michael watched War Dogs, and then Netflix told him that he would also like I Care a Lot, right? Mm-hmm. And so you're like, oh, I guess I got to watch that. Thanks, Nick. Because so, well, the algorithm uh, told me to. The like name of this podcast is going, I already know, I'm, and you, whoever ed- edits this is going to put in text, uh-huh. I don't care at all, a review of I care a lot. Mm, you, that's good. You see my, wow. a review. I oh, and see, in, in parentheses. I can see myself watching this right now. <laughs> a review. Uh, and in parentheses it says, but that's not all that we talk about <laughs> on the podcast. Talk about. <laughs> Don't be fooled. Other, well, so I wanted to talk fooled. about t- this this uh, podcast. I wanted to talk about motivation, which also has to do with that movie. Because mm. okay, what if the podcast title was motivation? <laughs> A partial review Motivation. of I care a lot, but a we don't care a lot I about it. <laughs> and then small love, I don't care Mike, a lot. Corey, Jamin, John. All right, Jono, what did you think about I care a lot? I care a lot was um, Trash probably the game. best film I've seen uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so since in the last twelve hours, yeah, mm-hmm. um, it was it was better than I thought it'd be. It had its right. own style, which I was you know I feel like it's hard to. Um, with movies, especially Netflix, like mm-hmm. the ones that rise to the top are just like often so mm-hmm. uh, terrible, mm-hmm. terrible mm-hmm. that it's like, um, you know, there are, you can't tell them apart. This one felt different. It felt like entertaining. Yeah. And you said that. That's actually what got me to watch it. It You're was like, fun. It's very it's fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Usually movies that make me want to like review them like are like Tenet where it's like it has so much potential. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's by maybe either a reputable filmmaker or it's or it's it it has so much going for it. And then mm-hmm. it just it just so doesn't. I'll quite give you my deliver. likes and my dislikes. Let's, let's pause here and just say. If you if you care about I care a lot, think our sponsors. Mass oh, spoilers! Yeah, don't watch this. Spoilers you... now. Well, or... just in general, probably don't watch it. Well, if you care, <laughs> okay, that's a spoiler. <laughs> Wait till they've seen it to tell them not to watch it because that's a big spoiler. Oh, right sorry. Yeah. So spoiler alerts on that movie. Spoiler alerts. Potential. Spoiler, alert. <laughs> spoiler alerts potentially on War Dogs too. If we want to tie that in. Uh, uh, what? This is kind of turning into last week's podcast. <laughs> Look, oh, let's just that recap that to everything. No, so, no, no, okay, in our first no, podcast no, we talked no, about. No, 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 <laughs> because no, because we didn't talk about war dogs really. Okay, well, anyways, back to me. And I think it's, a, I think there are two. I think to Michael's point, I'm that tired of just getting talked over. There's by everyone two movies my whole life that do very similar things but very differently. So go ahead. So I like that it um, had the DP, the director of photography was really, uh, you know, personable seemed, on seemed, set. Seemed like <laughs> they were a good guy or a good girl. <laughs> Um, whoever, whoever they were, they were was probably because nice I didn't look person. in in the credits, but um, I felt like it distinguished itself, so it looked really pleasing and I'm had a lot of right interesting lighting. Thank mm-hmm. you for checking or find out who this person is. Give him a little shout out. Yeah, visually, I felt like the, it was the, nice. The, the the writing um and the direction that the movie uh, was going and its message was lacking. The writing was very bad because there was no character arcs anywhere to be found. His name uh, is the, Doug you know, Emmett. The, oh, Doug. Good job, Doug. 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 Doug was pretty good there. And so the, this is our core of our complaint with Tenant too, when we uh, had, you know, our review of that. I think it was like, wow, I wish characters learned something or we saw their flaws or we saw how they overcame something. This was kind of like, here's a person who's this way and they're going to 
follow the plot to the end. Mm. And that's not like, you know, it's entertaining, but it's not anything you would ever reflect on or yeah. learn from. I, so, think, I think the development was, it seemed like, towards the end, you realize just how, like in the beginning, you're uh, you're assuming that she's a horrible person a, li- a little bit, but you're still kind of like, well, it's our main character. I feel like the development in arc was that you realize, oh, she's worse than we thought. She, <laughs> she really has. Should nothing. we do a quick like explainer of what happens generally in the so plot? So I, mm-hmm. I can yeah, do, do it. If you, yeah, yeah do the do the yeah, plot synopsis. For All right. So there's. I'll I'll try to make it like a minute. So there's this woman who has. She's a con artist, and her whole theory theory on life is that there are sharks or there are, there are lions and lambs, and she's a lion. And so you either you either get or you get got. And so she's she takes advantage of people in order to get ahead in life. She discovered a scam, and we don't even know how. They don't tell us, but it's around gar- legal guardianship um, for wards of the state. And that's most commonly in the context of elderly people. Mm -hmm. So she's actually gamed the system in collusion with a medical doctor and a uh, care facility director. It's a group effort. Yeah. She so she she's created this scheme where she gets a medical doctor to identify wealthy old people who might have some symptoms of like dementia or needing care beyond their themselves. So the doctor will embellish the the patient's symptoms. In, you know, in an emergency court case to get them declared a ward of the state and handed over to her, our main character, uh, Marla Grayson, to be their legal guardian. And once she has that in place, she literally controls every part of these elderly people's lives and they don't even know that it's happened until she shows up at their door and basically kidnaps them and places them into a care facility, uh, the director of which is also in her pocket. So... What, and then what she does is she, t- she seizes all of their assets, takes over their home, sells off all of their stuff in the name of, you know, uh, getting enough money to care for them. But really, she's just lining her pockets with this people, these people's like hard earned money in their retirement. And also, not only that, robbing the inheritance of their own children in some cases. Uh, her ideal targets are people who don't have much family or, or, or people who care about them because then they're easier to prey on. And there's less people who want to, you know, come to their defense. And that's the premise of what she's doing. Well, mm-hmm. until she finds what she calls a cherry, which is an ideal an ideal target, someone who's like super duper wealthy and has zero family ties. It's like the perfect person for her. But guess what? Well, she gets her cherry. They do have a family <laughs> tie. And oh. unbeknownst to her. It's the worst family tie. This woman is... You know, this was, we can get into this, but I actually think that they imply that this woman was actually, like, the mob boss. At first, you think she's the mob boss's mom. Oh, okay. So, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, well, okay, okay. Well, so, okay. Well, so, so she gets her, you know, prime target, and without going into the rest of the movie... We find out. She finds out that not only does this woman actually have family that she didn't know about, but her family is the Russian mafia. Or Which is why there was no family to be found out about. And so... They were very oopie, secret. Oopie. Whoopsies. Yeah. So then... Uh, by the way, by this point in the movie, for me, I'm on board. Totally. And, and, totally. and, I'm, yeah. and I'm rooting for the Russian Even mafia. Even as Cody is explaining it, I'm like... This is a very fascinating. No, it's compelling. Like this is why it's mm-hmm. it's such the a plot fascinating. Is fascinating. It's yeah. a fascinating movie, and it's not a bad setup. And, and it's not a bad. My other positive, I forgot to say, was I love the acting. Like every the character acting. was Great so acting. strong. Like the scenes were like, oh yeah, yeah. had They're, room, and they were they were well done. And it was the, like wow, the pacing you know, of like, their conversation felt realistic. Felt, yeah, yep. it didn't feel like unnatural. It felt like they were menacing without being like too Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they like the the scene with the lawyer when he comes in, it's just like That's this. My favorite. It's so this, good. It's just favorite this team. power play of like of like dominance. He's and so like good. he just expects like everyone in his life is always back down. Anytime he's done it's this, so the person good. back down. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just like, no, dude. No, like, she's like, I'm not bring backing it on. down. Yeah. Like, so, so that was kind of cool because you know this character and it goes back to what we're saying anti-hero. You know, she is a bad person. She starts out the film by saying, I'm bad i don't care right uh and then you start to see her you know take down people who are you know expensive lawyers or you know whatever and you're like wow that's like pretty pretty dope that she's doing that but then you realize she never gets nervous she never has any issues she's always just like eh, whatever all the time like she's ne- she's bulletproof essentially and uh, she's almost like she's not human human mm. 
<laughs> yeah, and then aliens come and everything. So, <laughs> so you see her do that throughout the whole movie, and yeah. then you realize that she's actually doing it because she wants to, as she puts it, get so rich she can use money like a, a weapon yeah, well, and bludgeon yeah. people. She basically so wants to like, be a mob boss herself. She wants to. It'd be, be like interesting a, uh, if she had some like, like you know, like heartbreaking story behind it that made you know like yes, this is Peter now you're Dinklage, getting to the core of it. Peter Dinklage's character right off the bat. You could see he was a mob boss. I, th- I think we said this. He, he, you could see he had shame right away. Like he was in secrecy. He didn't want. Yeah. He he had to meet with his mom in secret. You could tell that there was something yeah, going on I, with him right I away. I was literally rooting for mm-hmm. Peter Dinklage's yeah. character and the old lady who are mafia human traffickers. Yeah, they're horrible. And I and I they're my protagonist as I'm watching it. Yeah. I'm like I love these characters so much, and they don't ever set up like a real like a scene where it's like th- you get to see just how ruthless and heartless they are they never set up like the the old lady like really threatening to just like just decimate her family and friends yeah. like you don't get this sort of villain scene so well, so the movie is yeah. telling me essentially that i don't I, and i was like I, I literally was like racking my brain i'm like is this like ironic is it like a satire like i care a lot is the name like like I like ironic like you're like I care a lot but you're obviously not going to care about this I'm literally like trying to understand right. what like what is the filmmaker where is he coming from or uh-huh. he or she I didn't know it was a guy uh-huh. who directed it and I was I, I was like I, yeah. I don't I don't know where he's coming from with like what I'm supposed to be feeling because the way it's set up is it as is we're kind of supposed to be on her side and where you really realize that—that's what I was is trying when, to figure out—is like, are you supposed to be on her side? When she gets kidnapped, you realize, oh, Peter Dinklage and the Russian mafia—they're supposed to be the villain. And by then, I was like laughing at the movie. I'm yeah. like, this is no. just silly. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, like I don't know if this is a misuse of the word, but it feels like a very nihilistic view of the world. Like they're like, just it was all meaningless, and people are inherently bad, and like that. This is why. So I think as a filmmaker, when which is fine, but like people still have motives, right? And I think it's like yeah. this is the problem I had with the movie because I did think it was well made, I did think it was entertaining and well shot, and all those other things. But story wise, I think when it comes to watching movies, you either want to feel you want to walk away from the movie feeling good or at least resolved or uh, <clears throat> provoking thought. Right. right, and you know, and the problem with this movie was that there was nothing but badness. There was just only evil people. There was not a single redemptive quality in any of the characters that you could at least latch on to and say, well, at least I have that, and I can, root the, I can root for the fact that that might win. None of them, not a single character was good. And so you're just trying to figure out, like, who is least mm-hmm. bad? Like, <laughs> And, like, the only redemptive part, in a way, that I had was, like, well, at least she died. She deserved to die, but at by by that point she had done so much damage. But she that should have died that, when she went when they drove her off the cliff. That was my problem. Is that by then the movie elevates from reality and mm-hmm. goes, "This is a movie. Watch our our hero like break herself out of the car and and kick <laughs> yeah. the windshield open." It's like, yeah, right. So <laughs> like, she, she would never be able to do that. To continue the synopsis, basically they try and kill her. And she survives, and the other woman that she's in cahoots with survives, and they both go and they take out revenge on Peter Dinklage's character, the mob boss. Right, and it's uh, and it's all set to badass music. Right, right. It's but just like boom, like they you know. also are horrible murderers, and they fail to murder him, and so then he's still alive. Well, you, no, I, that was intentional. They yeah, didn't well, mean you to don't ca- know. They knew I mean, if you're gonna overdose someone, no, with needles and put him in the woods, like no, she purposefully. That was on purpose. <laughs> she wanted to be his guardian, right? It was all to get control over him to then ex- to extort ten million dollars. But anyway, so she survives. Which is stupid. She survives. They all survive, <laughs> and then she, and then he's like, "Oh, let's go into business." Which I thought at the beginning, I was like, "They would work well together. Like there shouldn't be enemies." So anyway, so then they they're like, "Let's." You know, let's make a business where we take guardianship over everyone in, in the, the entire whole world. country. Yeah, he goes. He's basically like, "What you've done is guardians. great. I love it. What we need to do is scale it. And we need mm-hmm. to do specifically eighty businesses." Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> he said eighty businesses. So, so they literally create a franchise model of this scheme on preying on the elderly, and it's horrible because they end up. You know, they build this giant, and she's praised by it yeah. from the public, and they become billionaires preying on the on the the weak and innocent. Yeah, but yeah. then and, at and the then very it's like end, a it's commentary on capitalism. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But at the very the, end, she gets shot by this guy that she snubbed. Right. In the by her. The, the and are we, first what victim. are we supposed to feel when she gets shot? Well, I, that was the end of the movie. But I said, I said, wow, now it's getting good. You know, like that moment was like, 
yeah dang here we go like this no, is literally like, nicole and i like cheered when she died yeah. but we were like are we is that are we supposed to feel that are we supposed to because the way she's set up is very mm -hmm. uh like like yeah like heroic like she's supposed to be the anti-hero who then dies and you go oh impactful moment but i'm like i don't know yes finally you died you got yours you know and plus i love that actor he's uh who who mm. is who plays the 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 guy who got shafted in the beginning who comes mm -hmm. back and, and shoots her? I, I love that actor. There's something about just like it also like outside of the movie, like you know that actress. It was in Gone Girl, and that mm -hmm. like just that movie disturbed me so heavily. And mm -hmm. then that actor was in uh, Blue Ruin and a few other movies, and mm. like I love oh, yeah. I love his character. <laughs> so there's something also yeah. of like satisfying to see <laughs> that actor shoot yeah. this actor. I don't know. It's, it's a like cross movie. Satisfaction, right? But also just for the story, it was like, yeah, I guess. Are you telling me, it, you know, as the filmmaker, are you trying to have like a complete unbiased like like pre presentation? Because it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like Game of Thrones, where it's like yeah. everybody's morally ambiguous. But they they set it up really well, where it's kind of like a bird's eye view. This was very much set up like you you must care about our hero and her her girlfriend who she doesn't seem to give a crap about. No, she doesn't. She just wants to no. get rich. And and also her her girlfriend gets her character makes no sense because she she changes her entire like like early she earlier in the movie she's very like rational. She's like let's get out of here like mm -hmm. we're we're in over our heads and then they get kidnapped, tortured and get out of it by just she's like, just completely unrealistically. Let's go harder. And now she and yeah. now suddenly she changes her tune and she's like let's get them back. Yeah, it's she's like, like you got a plan. It's like no <laughs> no human being I mean maybe that would happen. I I don't know. I I can't you know, I can't That's speak why for I think it's just so confusing. It it's doesn't like, seem what, like that would make sense. Who, yeah. One yeah, who are you supposed to root for? I I don't know if I'm fully on board with like it needs to have a good person. Or like no, no, no. I'm not saying that it needs to have a good person. You just you need to set up some sort of motive that's more than just yeah, I that's want what I, that's money. That's what I was saying. Is you either need to feel, like a believable, you need to feel good and root for good, or at least there needs to be like resolution. Like you need to feel com like that. I don't know. I felt so unresolved and so unsatisfied in I that movie. I think the thing you're feeling is the fact that they you felt the writer voice a lot in the movie, and it was almost like yeah. here's a cool plot, and we're just gonna attach what we are kind of outraged about onto it. And like, I felt that a lot and it kind of took me out of it because they were pulling you all different ways with like, oh, like we're annoyed, you know, like they would literally stop a scene to be like, that definitely ties into one of the podcasts we did a while ago about, you know, preachiness. Yeah. Movies. Cause it did, like if you are trying to it's not authentic teach it someone off. something via a movie story, it just becomes, Difficult well, yeah, I, to I, engage in the story I was, itself. I was watching it with Nicole, and I'm like, "Is this like? Is this make sense for like you know, like like mm -hmm. women's empowerment?" And she's like, "She's like, no, I I I don't mm -hmm. I don't understand Be because if, the, if that's what they're trying to say, it makes no sense. An example this person is is just awful. a monster. Example yeah. of of one of the moments was you know the lawyer comes in and says, you know the doctor signed off. Why would he do that? And she's like, she yeah. And then it pauses. What the doctor? The doctor's a she. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. And then two seconds later, he's like, so what would he, oh, yeah. I mean, she do. And well, it's like, he does why, that why was it four times in that screen? He's like, this, like, and then he's like, this she doctor. Yeah, but like, if the movie was about that, that's cool. But this was just like tagged on. Like, well, no, just, I think that it ties in. Like, it, she is a strong female lead, and yeah. it's supposed to showcase that she is. Strong and uh, willing I, to go at you know whatever she yeah, needs to do. Thought, She's ruthless, but at the same time, it doesn't really have. She doesn't have redeeming qualities about her. I, I yeah, think. and and all what of makes that makes you hate women. But okay, so here's here's here's, yeah. here's <laughs> like what I think about this movie. It's like I bet you, I bet you that the prequel to this movie would be pretty good mm -hmm. because if she was like, let's just say that her character was like this young nurse in a nursing home and she actually genuinely cared about the elderly mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And and that's how she got to know the system. Mm -hmm. And and something happened hey, to her good. where she became jaded. Yeah, I want to watch this movie. Right? And then, mm -hmm. and then, and then, and then by the end, she's got this... Right. So she doesn't care sorry. about the elderly so, so she, <laughs> anymore. Like, well, so, so she's like this weak, unassuming female character, and then you know get, she gets abused of, yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. and then she uncovers the scam, and you get to see or the, the how her. like she the Breaking Bad 
evolution of becoming worse and worse and worse. And along the way, you're justifying it with her mm -hmm. because you saw where she came from and how weak and pathetic and taken advantage of she was. And then she ended like this magnate yeah. evil boss. And then you're like, you, you she did it. She became an evil boss. Right. Yeah, but, but, but we even, came in way too far along that story to care mm -hmm. about her. I actually think you could still make a compelling story with the exact same structure, exact same timeline, if we just if you just gave her motives that made sense. Because nobody is just like, I want money and power That's just it. so I can yeah. weaponize. It's like, yeah, but mm -hmm. what's behind that? Like, Why? Yeah, maybe you want Why money and power. do you Even want that money the and power? One, yeah. the, they did it on purpose. The one moment that they gave us to humanize her, they just went hard the other way. When he showed her the fo video, he had her tied yes. to the chair and said, That's your mom, oh. isn't it? He's like, After I destroy oh, I know. after I destroy you, I'm going to destroy her. And she just goes, Oh, F that B. I don't care. Yeah. Like, she's a sociopath. Yeah, she's just a kill psycho. her. I know. And it's like, and so it made her way worse. That's than, the only association she has with any of her family. And it made her way more evil than him because he, he he's loved his all, mom. He's doing all this for his. He mom. at least loved his mom. Yeah. yeah. And she doesn't even care. She's like, kill my mom. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that and, that was ruthless. Yeah. At, yeah. At and that, he was, was just like, he worst. was just like, he was shocked. He was like, and okay, maybe <laughs> that's like an interesting plot point. If we had some reason to know why she didn't like. Well, there mom. you go. In the prequel, the mom could have been a part of her. Her, her change right yeah. like but or we if they revealed that she was lying like maybe she was bluffing that's i was wondering that in that scene like is she bluffing about not caring about her mom i don't think so i think she's that mm -hmm. crazy that ruthless no. and evil and yeah. self-interested so basically if they were trying to show like the you know the positive powerful woman figure they backfired it because they went so hard on how psychotic and and evil that she was you know yeah, I mean? and if they're trying to show like a manipulative sort of like sociopath character and like how that type of character yeah. gets developed or or how someone could could choose that in their in their life or whatever yeah. they don't they don't really go there either so you don't really understand uh, like the whole thing is like yeah i don't understand is it like, the motivation is it like a woman can be so strong Women are so strong and so powerful that they're they're too powerful. You know what I mean? Like oh yeah, right. And then that's why she got killed by that guy who was kind of like you know derogatory towards yeah, her. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't just know like I, don't, I, I, don't I don't. I don't get know it either. either. <laughs> Maybe it's we probably like, shouldn't spend too much time trying to figure it out. <laughs> on you know just how the system is not fair. I was thinking along those lines. It it was actually highlighting something about the elder care stuff. You know yeah. that was kind of cool. That it was I actually believe that people, some, yeah. somebody's got to be doing. That. <laughs> but but totally. it, but it just got like it was like oh that's an interesting thing. They're making a movie about something that actually yeah. has happened in our country. And yeah. you know state workers do get assigned. And Jamin even said he had you know his grandma had something similar happening. I don't know if you want to uh, share that. No, or. it wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not something similar, but I, I, what I mean is the taking advantage. Well, of. yeah, so there's like people, I don't know if they're overseas or in the country, who will call old people mm -hmm. and become their friends because no one else is talking with them. Like their children are busy <clears throat> and whatever. Yeah. And um, so there's these people that will call old people and then just become their friends and then ask them for money. And they'll give them money because they are declining and old and mm -hmm. have dementia or whatever mm -hmm. and then or they like, yes. like they don't have like family to love on you know so. yeah so they'll they're very gullible is the right yeah. word like vulnerable because th think about if the movie just yeah it was like such a crazy story i don't care if it's fiction it was just all about like how an old lady got taken advantage of and just the pursuit you know of her trying to get out of this you know, controlling relationship and she's just, you know, oppressed by someone that really has no right to be oppressing her. And, you know, you're rooting for her to, to get out of this and maybe mm. there's a really interesting plot around it. Yes. That to me is something that you're like, oh, I, oh, that makes me think of this, this movie I saw about this uh, elder care abuse. You know, it's kind of interesting because that parallels to something that is actually a real problem. That was what yeah. I was, re when I read the, the, you know, the little blurb on Netflix and then, um, started the movie before we met Peter Dinglish's character. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's where I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. It's going to yeah. be like this old, who, unassuming lady who's getting abused and taken advantage of. And she's going to, awesome. and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
and it's, it's gonna be awesome. You no, know, and then you're gonna realize like, oh no, she's way smarter. Yeah. Like, oh, she's yeah. actually like this. She doesn't know what she like, got. I really wish we just spent more time with with her. the lady. Yeah. Because I wish you know I wish Peter Dinklage and the whole mob thing wasn't a part of it, and it was just this evil, manipulative woman versus this innocent old lady who she underestimated, and then and then we get to see how this woman like mm-hmm. battles back and like redeems herself. That would be a great movie. Very different, but it, it would, almost feels like there was like a uh, argument in the writing of it of like we need to do that, and then they compromise, and they're like, okay, well, we'll still does, put, we'll still put in the mob, but it <laughs> right. does you know, feel that way. It feels like they were like, here's a really cool concept, but like then there was too many cooks in yeah, the kitchen, and yeah. they just like because like a lot of movies now that yeah. that movie would have been a great commentary on our our treatment of elderly in our society. Well, that, that's actually why I, I, you know, I, I watched it right after War Dogs, but I, I had already seen the trailer and that's why I was interested in it because I'm I'm fascinated by, like, I, I worked at a, a old folks home. Like, I've been wanting to, uh, like, finish this screenplay I've been, like, loosely working on about, like, working with, with old people and how everyone just, mm. like, pays for, they just kind of, there's, eh, they just they they're willing to shell out so much money to get their parents just away from them, yeah. and how like the culture is like affected by that. Like I'm fascinated by those yeah. ideas. I'm like, oh, this is this movie's gonna explore that. <laughs> like you're saying, Me like too. like oh how we, how the you know the in the system is set up in a way where it's just I, I, profiting I, off of these like these poor <laughs> old people just rotting away. Yo, and yeah, like, I already feel like more satisfied thinking about if it was just about that. Right, that's what like, I'm saying. Like that would have been so good because with, you would have yeah. had a, a prota- we, we all real like protagonist. the idea of of what the movie could, could have been, have been. <laughs> which is yeah. what makes it such an interesting thing. Cause it's like, ah, oh, you had so much potential. <laughs> okay. Totally. Not, not to bring this too like, uh, into, you know, our work and stuff, but it's, it's funny how just before the podcast, we'd said like motivation behind stuff. And also like, you know, the, the, the meaning, what are we trying to get at? If it's something that's authentic, it's something that's like, it is telling a real story. Then yeah. pe- people love that and they want to watch that. But like, we all hate the videos and you know stuff that's made that's just corporate and it's like oh we know it's just to make money or it's just to like say you have a video you know what i'm saying yeah and like, now, like, and now like that does, movies no, are starting to feel that way no where depth. it's surface level yeah. and there's and there's surface like level. yeah and they are you can already feel like almost not a product they're selling yeah i mean with like product placement as much as like a an ideology I, ideology they're mm-hmm. selling yeah. mm-hmm. and once you feel that you're like ah like it just it doesn't yeah, it doesn't yeah, feel right. Yeah, because we can make something that looks so polished and has the best, like, cameras and all this stuff, but if it's just, like, corporate polished, you know, well, yeah, mumbo-jumbo, w- like, it doesn't mean anything, and I'm never going to want to show it to my family or show it or share it on, you know, my personal feed or anything, but if it's a project that was meaningful and, like, you know, this person was so honest about their story, mm-hmm. then I'm like, you know, like, check out this thing I was just working on. Like, this is, like, yeah. so moving that, you know... Yeah. Right. People want to know want the motivation behind like what yeah, what people do whether it's in yeah, it's in like an ad or whether it's in a, a movie or mm-hmm. what or, or whatever. That's that's extremely important to just like connecting mm-hmm. with another person and even that's where, even yeah. in uh, yeah, through a video or a movie or anything. It's like that and and I thought oh maybe people love this movie. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I look up you know some reviews on some. that app on Letterbox. Oh, I James should read Letterbox I, I has read some reviews and they're and they're like all saying a lot of the same thing. They're like, oh, okay, is this like, you know, like th- like are we supposed to be rooting for the for this this person who who is just like a, a sociopath who has no motives? Like I, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not I'm not the only one who feels this way because yeah. it was like number one on Netflix. I'm I like, know. oh. But is the it thing just is, there's a compelling trailer. There's no way to know on Netflix. Like if no. it's there, you you just click it. You know, whereas right, if you if you're right. looking at oh should I go to a movie, oh it's got fifty percent on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. Yeah, but like, people will watch what 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 quote unquote like oh everyone's watching. You know, mm-hmm. I wonder how much is intentional with like just trying to make it um, irritating and like edgy, Awful. like you know, edgy in a way that's like. Going to catch our attention because you it, say it did. entertaining or irritating. Irritating. <laughs> they want to make it irritating. irritating. Yeah, it was both. It was entertaining and you know irritating. What I, like, that's irritating. That's to get a classic. <laughs> to get a reaction. Yeah, yeah, it's a classic like PR. Yeah, like move is to just do things that are going to catch people's attention. Like this they is definitely a movie went that, for edgy and it's yeah not yeah. I don't know if so I, I think that. you know the whole if we were to contrast, I mean, we're all here talking about it. Well, yeah, right. yeah. 
We but said the same thing with Tenet. We're like, it's we're it, talking this about it. the worst thing, but we're it it gets such a reaction. Yeah. So when you talk about connecting to motivation, mm. like we can contrast that to like war dogs. I think w- when you so I'm, so <laughs> I want to I want to tie really it in. To I want I can tie I can in. walk off and not listen. Like I can Jamin go plug hasn't my ears. Seen it. Gonna, are we gonna spoil God, it? Are we gonna, yeah. are we gonna spoil it? Yeah, just go ahead. Well, let me just it's not really let, like a bad still here with I'll your just, uh, Let me just t- let me just say this. Yeah, like you're not gonna be able to hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Plug your ears. I mean, we're just gonna say something. I mean, he's gonna say. Something. Oh my god. Okay, I can't. I can't actually do this with you over there. What? Oh man, we lost a member. Uh. For those listening, well, what were you gonna say? Is it gonna spoil War Dogs? It's not really a movie that would like get super spoiled. All right, yeah, I'm it? just gonna keep talking. So, connecting. To, so I may not be able to connect to what you're doing or how you're doing it or agree with those things, but if I can understand your motivation, I can empathize with you as a human. Right. Because if I know that your motivation is pain, well, I've felt pain. If it's sadness, well, I've been sad. If it's anger, I've been angry. Like I can relate to all those things, and therefore, I <laughs> There's can only five emotions. <laughs> I can understand. I can begin to understand why you're doing the things you're doing. Right. So that's, that's why the that's, anti-hero right. works if you understand if you, the motive. But you have to see it. You ha- they have to give the, you, you that information. To, yeah. I don't know so, how you're making this full circle. So with what happened? So with War Dogs, you understand his motivation much, much, much more. And you understand mm-hmm. how he Miles got... Miles Teller's character? They can just Miles show Teller's character. Like, literally, they just show him going home, and he's got a wife and a kid. Yeah, he's like, got a okay. wife and a kid. He's not... His life ha- his life hasn't panned out the way he thought it would. He's just not as successful yeah. as he hoped but, he'd be. Well, and he's making money. He's got a steady job. But there's also the... Ex- there's a, the boredom. Like, and there's the, the yeah, excitement the, the that, that you The allure and the excitement yeah. of the life that Jonah Hill is having. You're like, oh, I could see myself being tempted by that. They, they're, they went to high school together. They mm-hmm. have... They have they went through a lot of the same things, and then you, you're inevitably comparing yourself to you're like, wow, yeah. we came from the same place, we are the same age. Look at where you are versus. And the other thing, he's kind of uh-huh. everyone can. He's kind of got that Walter White thing too, where he's just kind of like sick of being a punching bag, like yeah. not having any control in his life. Like he just he misses the feeling of being in control. And War Dogs works also because it's a true story. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, and then and then you can feel him along the way being like, okay, this is the last time I'm going to make this compromise. Like after that's this, how people really are. Yeah. The, after this, I'm done. I'm not doing yeah. this anymore. Like, and then you know, and he has a redemptive like heart part of it where he like actually does regret what he did and stuff like that. So totally much more of a, a resolved completed story that you actually feel for this character yeah the only reason it's worth ever comparing is that i watched them back to back <laughs> well it's no it, it is it I, was just such a high of like that was so good let's yeah. go to this other thing oh when you mentioned them and then i saw them both i was like oh i see why mike's head went to where it did because it's the anti-hero from the, doing it the right way where people connect to your character and doing then doing it, it away wrong. doing it in a way where you have zero connection to the character and feel yeah. just lame about it so makes sense. With that said, what what do you think is uh, not, not to get all uh, th- 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 inter- I don't know, like th- like a therapy question or like a interview question, but like what is the big Dim the one light of the biggest on Cody right now? What is the biggest motivator for you guys as artists or filmmakers or just in life? What motivates you? What? I have literally well, never I think, thought about that. I think that oh. in, I think that <laughs> in this world there are lions and there are lambs, and you either get or <laughs> and you I'm get, a lion. I'm a I'm a mother effing lioness. I'm a freaking lamb, and I'm gonna get slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get sheared left and right, <laughs> but I provide something for someone else. <laughs> um, That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So to really answer your question, I think we talked about. We don't it. actually have to answer that. But. Well, I mean, this is what we do with clients too. You know? Yeah, why? They that's say, why oh, said, here's what we do, and we say, well, why do you do that? Mm-hmm. Isn't it They're interesting like, uh, though how the why, why question that? is just in itself engaging and interesting? Like, and uh, and it's very basic. It's like that's what children are asking all the time, and, and people so get annoyed. Why? We why? people get annoyed with that why? because they they realize I don't have the answer. <laughs> but it's such a probing and digging question right. and and it is reflective and, and it's in, rewarding in its nature because every time they're asking why they're getting more information and they're yeah. like well why well why is that well, why is that and now they're like yeah you can you can ask that question endlessly yeah almost almost mm-hmm. like how yeah, like you, that, you ask it one time that have you heard or, that louis bit no where it's like his daughter just won't 
stop asking why and eventually it just gets to, to like oh, the most it metaphysical so meta, yeah. philosophical <laughs> answer which is like, some things are and some things and are not you can't <laughs> you can't be and not be <laughs> but that's where it goes like that's crazy though <laughs> yeah he 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 just hits the nail on the head with everything he says not does mm. um, why is like having <laughs> having a shovel he's just the perfect person you can just but it's interesting that when we're when we're watching movies when we're engaged in any type of story or like consuming any type of like nonsense on social media or whatever it's like we we want to know that that has to be like somewhat answered why is this movie made why was this ad put out there yeah 99 percent of the time the answer is money for most why questions. It's true. Um, well, that's why there's all noise. There's just so much noise. You're like, yeah. Yeah. that's why certain, numb, you're like numb to it because it's all the same why behind it. It's all like, oh, just to make money certain, and to certain target you. Cut through when you're like, oh, oh they're targeting more they're, than money. They would take less money if you, that you, thing you happened. You know what? Right. Is an effective ad? I've seen ads that are just like, hey, I, you know, this is like me on my couch, like with my cell phone, and like literally I'm not selling you anything. Like, here's just free information. Like, I was like, wow, like, that was cool. Like I actually watched the whole ad. It was like just a real like here's some like general like yeah. and I'm then helping you, you. And, and it was then like, you bought the full course. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll t- it's a monthly. <laughs> it's a monthly. It's a subscription. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a subscription based. On, well, they got me. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? But if they had just said I want your money, I would have said no. Well, look, there's not there's nothing wrong with wanting money for by being motivated by money. We all have to pay the bills. But I think that. But even but that, why you, do you want money? Yeah. <clears throat> pay the bills. No. <laughs> so like yeah, to live, you need it to live. Yeah, yeah to but live. even to live, then you're saying like I want to have money to build a good family or actually, to build a good yeah, life. You or actually to build don't a- need it to live. You just need it to you know, like in do like Carol, why, why does she want to be rich? It's actually, I mean, yeah. it, it, this wasn't really revealed, but I would guess that it's because she wants to prove herself, like. Her internal battle. Well, is, there's some. They they yeah. allude to some insecurity, which is so dumb. Like, why don't you give us more about this character? I want to care about her, and you're not letting me. She's like, and in the very beginning, the lot. very beginning monologue, she goes, she goes, and I've been poor. Like, I've been really poor. That would be cool. Though. Imagine oh, if we. Un- and then the voiceover thing changes to, to her, her the girl- girlfriend. Ah! <laughs> within the first five. That makes no sense. Within the first five minutes, we get two narrators and then we oh, never go yeah. back to the second one ever again oh. i forgot about that uh, that was weird but yeah so th- that was <laughs> that was another dissatisfying thing about it. it's like okay clearly she has a past clearly something led to her being like something with her mom she used to be really poor there's mm-hmm. something there but they didn't tell us any of it yeah. sorry to but bring us back no, to, to the movie to, to, no, okay. to go away from the movie uh, oh yeah as you far guys as never we answered can my question. <laughs> really honestly though finding out your personal why i mean a lot of times we don't even know what it is yeah um but if we took enough time, we could probably look at the evidence and see what it is. Um, but like, I feel like a lot of times people feel um, unmotivated. They feel anxious. They feel depressed, and they're never connected to a bigger vision of anything or sense whether, of purpose. Whether in work, whether in their personal life, whether in their family, if there's no overarching why as to where they're going, mm-hmm. that is unhealthy and you actually start to develop unhealthy mental symptoms because totally. of that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And when you get plugged into something that like we're going somewhere, we value you, we're doing, you know, we're on a mission, you know, mm-hmm. we, we have purpose and all of a sudden you're like, you feel yourself coming alive. And this is why people join gangs and join cults yeah. and join all sorts of things just yeah. because they want to have a sense of and they're purpose. Y- and they're so and, young and, and belonging. At the time yeah. That they're not feeling it anywhere else. And they're saying, wow, I, I didn't want to kill people or be in a gang or <laughs> fight, but oh my God. you know, they loved me, you know, they actually like taught me and protected me. And so, yeah. I, and there's a great, there's a greater know, sure mission that we're all moving towards, you know, yeah. like whatever and it might be. It's so needed. Like yeah. a movie needs it. Right. I mean, we're just sitting here talking about for like 45 minutes about how this movie needed a why. And yeah. we all need whys, and we all well, need to. I, I actually, I, I've been fascinated by like the idea of like no reason and there's oh this just ha- it just is right. Oh. There, have you had uh have you ever seen Rubber, the movie Rubber? It's about a tire that's alive and like kills people and it's the whole theme I've of the of movie it. is. I remember like, that. But I, never I might it. have seen some of it. It's fantastic. It, the whole theme of the movie is that there's there's no reason. Like mm. the, in they, they they kind of explain that right up front. Like stop trying to dissect things and I I I, mm-hmm. I love that, but. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it, it it ends up 
not making sense because yeah. you're watching the movie. You're like, well, you made the movie to make the, <laughs> the point that but, there's no reason, yeah. mm-hmm. which is a circular. It's because th- there's always balance. There's unpredictability and uh, uh, happenstance and total like you know one in a million chance things struck by lightning. There's all this chaos of like you can't control whatever but then there's your sphere that you can't control and you have your full control over what you say what you think what how you act how you treat people you know what you go after what you're motivated by you can develop all of those things so like here's your little tiny what i can control and then here's the whole world that is like chaos and you can't control so it's like this balance where it's like hey to be realistic you know i can't control what happens with life like i could get hit by a drunk driver like it's out of my control, but I can do what I can do. Um, that's and I think it's hard to find that balance sometimes. The, but that's, that's the whole key, right? The balance is like, yeah. pe- I think, yeah, the, I think people get really hung up on one or the other. It's the, uh, or, or it's the old order, the old order versus chaos. Yeah. Or, or like, like I mean, it's like, it's like right in the middle is the sweet spot. Or like the, the serenity prayer. You guys know that? No. Like grant serenity now. It's from like, Seinfeld? it's like grant me the, <laughs> get, grant me the courage to, th- to control the things I, or to, to like something, the things face, I can face control, the face I the things I can control, control yeah. the wisdom to understand the things I can't control. No, the wisdom I to know the difference. I think that was on a plaque in my grandmother's. Uh, yeah, it's a very popular like w- it, the <laughs> Serenity Prayer. That's Basically, funny. like allow me to understand what I can control, yeah. uh, understand what I can't control, and to be able to tell the difference. Mm-hmm. And if you can, if yeah. you can hit those three things, and you're like a, probably a pretty satisfied person in life. Well, I, yeah, I mean sometimes it's. I don't know. It's I like, gotta look that up. I don't have my phone. Sometimes, what's if you look deep inside yourself, you can realize that you're motivated by this desire for the rest of the world to sort of adapt to what you think you want it to be like. Mm-hmm. You know, rather than kind of focusing on what you can do to. I don't know. Well, we have a client that we're working with right now that's big on the psychology, especially in, in education. And the thing they talk about a lot is the locus of control. There's either it's both an internal and an external locus of control. And whichever one that you live by or are able to, whichever mindset you're able to adopt will basically kind of dictate how you go about your life. And so if you're a person with an external locus of control, you're the person that says, basically, I'm a victim of circumstance. The world happens to me and I have no options. I have no influence over the outcomes of my life. If you're a person who has a mindset of an internal locus of control, you say, no, I actually do have influence over the outcomes of my life because of the things that Jono just mentioned. I can control my thoughts and my actions and how I handle things and all that. Mm. And, and I, I think the sweet spot is probably right in between because there's truth on both sides, I think. Right. It, it's And so I think the internal locus control is that middle ground. It's not that I choose my destiny because I am all powerful. It's not like you're the master of your universe, but it's that recognition of the fact that you do have some level of control over your life and the outcomes in your life because... You control those things. And that's a classic story trope too, right? Like a screenwriting thing that is in most screenwriting books, I feel like, the, the ones that I've read, is like don't have characters that only have things happen to them. Mm-hmm. If you your character falls flat and is uninteresting, unengaging, if the world is happening to them and they make no choice. Actually, like usually the beginning of a movie is... The world is happening to a character, yeah. mm-hmm. and then the they orphan, choose the orphan phase. They choose to take action or, or inci- do something. What's it called? The, inc- the inc- yeah, inciting, inciting incident, inciting incident mm-hmm. that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. it's like ties into storytelling too. I love this uh, quote from Stephen Covey. Uh, we might have used it in one of the scripts, or just read it through. Maybe we didn't end up using it. We but used him in some in one of the quotes. Yeah, the the four endowments. Nope. Okay. Quote. So every human has four endowments: self-awareness, conscience, conscience, independent will, and creative imagination. These give us the ultimate human freedom, which is the power to choose, to respond, and to change. Wow. Where were you with that quote when I was writing those scripts, dude? <laughs> oh, I put it in the quote list. Remember, we had a list. Uh, oh word my Where God. were your eyes when you needed them, Cody? So that was so interesting to me to think. Wow, I do have the ability to imagine, to like think and Im- create in my mind, and create yeah. characters and stories and paintings and whatever I want to create. I also have the free will to change or do something, make a choice. You know, stay home, go to work, do whatever. Um, you know, get in the car, drive, and then 
just the fact that I have a conscience that when something's right or wrong, mm. that ah, I feel it. It's amazing. And then self-awareness, that the fact that I know I'm human, I know I'm on an earth, I know you know that I'm talking to other people and that you guys are thinking something about me and I'm thinking something about you. <laughs> I, am saying, I struggle. Yeah, I, I know struggle you. With I, mean, those <laughs> last, I struggle with those last two. Yeah. Oh, say it again. What were the last two? I'm like, so I don't know if I have a, a conscience, conscience and I don't know if I'm here talking to you right now. A conscience? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I just my hand goes. I right could be just you. operated by <laughs> aliens right now. I'm just like, yeah. I mean, I think you would feel a lot of guilt and a lot of shame if you, you know, if you stole money from this company and you went off and did your own thing. I feel like it would weigh on I you. I think he does feel a lot of guilt when he steals money. <laughs> I from know. This company. It's just it, it, sometimes people get. No, I know. I, I know. People uh, get their consciences. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, they're completely void of. You know, of the level of conscience. You're on your conscience way. can be. Uh, Different, right? I mean, life would be so much easier numb. if I did, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's basically. Uh, to you ever feel yeah, that way? That's You're her. Like, I that's, just want to rob banks for a living. That's literally Marla freaking Grayson. It's just <laughs> don't give an f, have no conscience. Which was the woman from my from yeah. I care a lot. She just doesn't care a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Wait of a care. second, uh, is this movie deep? Oh my, oh my god. gosh, it's secretly my favorite movie. <laughs> is the movie actually deep because it's called I Care A Lot and she doesn't care? Like, literally doesn't yeah. care. Oh, and they, ma- they purposely yeah, made it so she doesn't care? She's a, yeah. They purposely oh made it so she gosh. doesn't have a character arc and oh. she doesn't have any motive? Oh. Boo. They did it. And the irony of the title. Oh, oh my gosh, it's gosh. actually good. It's <laughs> it's Spoil- actually spoiler alert, it's a great movie. Amazing. This is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> like it's one of those ones you gotta watch 10 20 times yeah to really get yeah 10 it 20 times <laughs> the funny thing is i really like mysterious characters who are like morally ambiguous i actually do like nicholas winding Refn, like almost everything he does the main character is like that where that? he's not spoon feeding you he did drive and oh, only yeah. god forgives and so my favorite uh the uh too old, the too, too old to die young which also has miles teller oh my god full circle <laughs> Miles Teller plays well, a cop is who is very circles. questionable and very mysterious, yeah. but he's extremely compelling. But the the way it's set up is is sort of is sort of stark and distant, and you're kind of an observer of the world, and and it's it's much different than like, you know, really forcibly like, oh, get inside my my head. I'm gonna give you my my philosophy that kind of makes no sense, and then stops somewhere along the way. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, anyway. but like I was saying, you have conscience. You know, it just <laughs> depends how much you have, and you're self-aware. You're so self-aware that you're s- too self-aware. not even sure that you are. W- oh, you know, that you know I, I mean? am. If, if you were just oblivious, living your life like that's like less self-aware. So all these have scales. Obviously, people are tapped. Some more. people are more human than others. You're yeah, so yeah, self-aware yeah. that it's you're not even you're aware of how unaware you are. It's so crazy. Um, oh my god! <laughs> blowing my. Mind. You, yeah, you're you you're too aware of your own thoughts. No, I was I was half kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Well, should we wrap? Do we talk everything? Talk about all that no, stuff? I, I would I love to hear you I rap. Please <laughs> make up a someone lay a beat right down. <laughs> there are lions and lambs, and I'm a mother effing lioness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, I mean, from the movie, but it was pretty good. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I'd love Jamin to bring it, it full gonna, circle. I'm just going to keep time. Full circle. <laughs> I'd love to bring it full circle. Oh, my full God. Circle. Should we just beatbox our way out of this one? All right, so should we, so. should we, hold on. Should we do hold a on. movie, should we do a movie every week, but also talk about Man, something else? Should that mo- be the movies f- take years should to that make, that be the <laughs> 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 I don't know what no, you... No, I mean, like, should... Cause, because I keep struggling with, like, I, I just want to keep talking about movies forever, but obviously course, that's not do. the only point I of this know. podcast. Right. Well, so put in the chat Should we, we do should make a, a movie movie every week. Sometimes, mm. re- sometimes interview guests. I want you on Spotify right now. If you want us to make more podcasts about Hit movies, that heart. click oh, the skip button. Do that? <laughs> and we'll know. We're still fine. We're still fine because <laughs> we'll look at the the Just information analytics. after, and whoever, however many people skipped, then we'll know. Okay, they wanted right. they wanted us to. No, go to your actual favorite podcast and comment on that one. Which movies you want us to review? Okay. 
that would well be, the reason i'm i don't yeah. know i'm just go to the joe rogan podcast i'm in like <laughs> self i'm in like self film school right now so i have like so many movies where i'm like i want to like talk about them yeah i love it we all love talking about movies i think what would be more realistic is if we did like one special movie driven one per month or something like that. That might be interesting. And then and then we, you know, do our other stuff with guests and stuff the other weeks. Yeah, I definitely want to still have still have guests. And, I think and that is makes it very, you know, it's it's the the format is very simple at that point. You we should probably get to know it. them, tell their story. We should and, probably thank our sponsor before this is over. Thank you, AMC, uh theaters <laughs> and uh Netflix and uh GameStop. IMDB for all you've done for us. Thank you, director of I Care a Lot. No one <laughs> really cares about what your name is. <laughs> Doug <laughs> Doug, Fr- friend, of Doug. <laughs> friend of Doug, friend of friend of Doug the DP guy. <laughs> just kidding. All just, right. just kidding. You did a good job. If you wanted to collaborate, in case, <laughs> if you have listened to more than one podcast, you're probably noticed that we're still honing in on you know what we're doing and why we're doing it, and we're figuring oh, that man, out. What's our why? Hopefully, oh it's entertaining. Why are we doing this podcast? Oh. <laughs> okay, here's a. Here's How come a we have no character? We arc? have a f- <laughs> no. We honestly have, we have officially what is going on? we have incorporated storytelling in some fashion into every podcast. That was the only goal, really. Yeah. So it's not like there isn't any through line. But I mean, we don't have to defend ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm feel <laughs> sometimes fine. you know what uh, enough <laughs> of a. My conscience is clear. <laughs> I'm not worried about like make your comments. Go ahead. Like, I see if I care because I don't care. I'll comment. Uh, what were you gonna say? I was going to say, sometimes, uh, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are. Mm-hmm. Do you think that uh, just creating to create is sometimes enough of a why? I think sure. creating just to create is not a good reason unless that you're creating just to create because you, you I think actually feel like, like the, for the, example, need, the need to, to make if, something that that inspires you. Like if you're just yeah. creating because it's like, you know, it's just, it's just, that's there. what I mean. Like, you're inspired to just create something. Well, creating to create for me has been often practice, and I will create, and then the meaning like materializes as I do it, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to film this plant and this coffee. And then I, I, all of a sudden, I've put out a little edit that's like, um, you know, something about like relaxing or like some mm-hmm. message that I'm thinking, whatever thought has been on my mind lately finds its way into like a little edit or something that I've been doing. So, like, I'll just, create to create yeah I, either I, it's meaningless and it's just practice or it becomes something that's like attaching whatever so there's always on. another reason well yeah i think, I, so. I think that I, if you're creating just to create it's because you enjoy the process it feels good you feel so some, your reason could your your why could be i'm learning or i'm reflecting i guess i'm, I'm or it feels good i want to paint assuming, this picture because i like painting and it feels good to yeah paint. That, that's I'm, what i mean though i'm like, assuming you mean like like content creation, yeah like that so like type of thing, for but, example like he was talking about i saw an ad you know john saw an ad that was just a guy talking on his couch with his phone right but i'm picturing sometimes the ads that i like most are creating because it's interesting and cool like literally just cool like it factor and that's really engaging and fun for me to watch like i yeah. love watching ads that are just cool and mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. then i wonder is that enough reason like is that like why am i motivated to be engaged in well, it? I, I if mean, it's an ad it's trying to sell you something are you saying your motivation for watching it what do you mean well yeah. it could also be cathartic to like do uh, a creative edit or to do is that i mean as like someone who's making an ad or something like why would you even create that like yeah like I, well, I think if I watch an Adidas ad that is just cool stuff. Yeah, but think, think about Adidas though. Like they have a brand, and so like for me, I love doing like brand work because mm-hmm. you actually tap into whatever that brand. Like, what's their vibe and what's their and what what you know? If you kept digging, yeah, they have a mission as a company. And they yep. have values as a company. Like, and that trickles down all the way to like, okay. oh, I'm making this what is really a nihilist? fresh, cool. Nihilist. Define nihilist for me. Nihilism. Well, so somebody be, who believes there's no meaning to life or so the reason for for living. Yeah, so it's like purposeless. I like, mean, they really shouldn't, you know, gather together as community or anything like that. Because like the Big Lebowski. Yeah, <laughs> the nihilists <laughs> are coming over. <laughs> yeah. I, I considered myself a nihilist for a long time, but I realized it didn't actually make sense. Right. I'm just one because I'm trying to tap into. 
I don't think Jamin's you're, why? You're an Well, I think Jamin's. I I was your your question actually I didn't I don't feel like I didn't actually answer it because I was assuming you meant like yeah like creating an ad or content just for the sake of it but like as as an individual if you're creating kind of for yourself yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah like you said it's like practice like yeah. I I mean I play music for no reason constantly like yeah. it's actually like I I it's like breathing I need to do it some people just. Literally, their creating time is just because they want to uh, decompress and unwind. Yeah, I don't think there's anything as there's no such thing as no reason. What you're saying is yeah, is the, exactly. is is something other than the traditional reasons a good enough of a reason. But there's always a reason for doing something, yep. even if it's just I want to relax and it feels good. That's a reason. Yeah. So, well, yeah. literally everything we, <laughs> if you break it down even further, like everything you do relates back to whatever need triggers that thing. Like I'm gonna get up and go get a drink of water. Has a reason because mm-hmm. I'm thirsty because I'm trying to keep my body or you alive. Have a, a need to be happy or need to be satisfied or, yeah. or something. And I think that's why the key is when you actually highlight it and you know what it is, it makes you way more motivated. When you tap into that specific, you thing. just automatically wow. your body you're like you don't think right now. Oh, I need to breathe in. I need to breathe out. Like it's automatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Welcome like, to the breathing pause. Uh, ASMR. I, I don't <laughs> need to actually. You know. <laughs> You don't need to breathe. Jamin has passed out like several times because he forgets to breathe. <laughs> no, his, just his proving pores things left just and right. automatically just intake the right amount of air. And uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we're uh, I think we're getting on this one. Okay, this yeah, man. Podcast. Bye. That's a good question though. I I I, I like this. Uh, there's a there's a little like podcast that's uh, create art, not content, and I really like that. Oh. I really like that statement. Because it's like if yeah, people are creating from a mindset of like obligation or or, or a regular. So there's good motives and structure. Bad motives. It's just like it's like you can tell usually. But if you're creating out of like in a creative person who's just like naturally that way, I mean, I, I can only speak for myself, but I think you guys feel this way. Like if you don't make something, it's like part of you just feels like it's rotting away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you death, know? and yeah, you <laughs> okay. just you just die in a in a in a. In a so it's like mm-hmm. people who maybe don't have that, uh, you know, might create out of that obligation. But it's like it's sort of like finding finding that finding what it is inside you that makes you go like, ah, yes, this is like this makes me come alive in some way. Not not the obligation for making it, but just, so, you know, find find whatever that, that I feel alive when I is. sit on the couch and eat Cheetos and watch Netflix. Mm, sometimes that is really, really nice. Well, sometimes you need to do that. Just That's to, uh, decompressing. Yeah. Well, um, you know, maybe next time we can interview uh, the CEO of Votary Films about how he creates this entire company. Know. His business is, I mean, his schedule is a little packed. Yeah, that's mm. true. That's true. Well, speaking of creating, we should go because there's clients waiting for us to create stuff for them. <laughs> <laughs> We're oh done. There's gosh. no way. You're, you're, you have no conscience. You're lying to the podcast. It's Actually, literally after 4.30. You're, oh you're telling me that we don't have gosh. work to do right now? Well, there's no clients waiting. Oh my God. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Mm. We wait for clients. That's how good we are. <laughs> Literally. We do the work and we're like, can you respond, please? Where are you? <laughs> we already filmed it. We, need some we create work before anyone asks for it and then they just kind of p- take it like off a menu. We literally shoot the whole thing, get all the content, and then we pitch them. That is kind Here's, of the model. That is one that way that, that people can That is kind of like work. the streaming model oh, that we've been talking about. Oh, you thought I was kidding? <laughs> oh, you thought I was kidding? Oh. <laughs> so annoying. All right. Goodbye. I'm just done. just want to say right, thank later. you to all of our <laughs> fans, all right, like, camera subscribe, operators. Annihilate, annihilate that, at, you know, whatever button Decimated. is on your app. <laughs> Decimated. Break your screen. We need a, we need like a, a regular outro or intro that like could music. Be it. Oh. No, so, no, like, 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 like music. You know, there's always like a some cue some the outro music. We usually do. It's oh yeah, it's your friend's band. All right, goodbye, bye guys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>